Oh, man, I love this. <laughs> so much fun. Today's video takes us to a farm, a rather typical farm with the usual cows, horses and a few goats, but there's another species of mammal roaming around here that wasn't necessarily invited to the party. Yes, our old friend the rock hyrax or dassy. We've hunted dassies many times before on this channel and if you've watched those videos you'll know that in most cases dassies are found on cliffs and rock structures away from settlements they keep to themselves and when we do hunt them, it's generally for food, not because they're a pest. In today's case though, things are a little bit different. Right next to the main shed on this farm lies a scrapyard with all kinds of old farm equipment, logs, trailers, barrels, concrete pipes, etc. just scattered around and with all kinds of nooks and crannies underneath this junk, the dazzies have moved in. With feed being provided to goats and cows right next door, the Dussies have started eating food that doesn't belong to them, and so today, some of them have to go to Dussie heaven. And of course, the meat will also be eaten, so it's a win-win situation for everyone. For this job, we have the perfect tool, a pre-charged pneumatic air gun, or two of them to be precise. These are quiet, accurate, and deadly. As much as I'd love to get straight into the action there's a couple of things that we need to get done first um, i'll start off by showing you the two rifles that we have here and both of them have new scopes on them which means we're going to have to zero them quickly but um, first things first the little impact m3 absolutely love this thing for this sort of close quarters uh, engagement of different targets um, we like to keep this nice and light so we've got a big old reflex silencer on here um, little helix HDLR on top and um, yeah very minimalistic gun it hasn't got all the heavy bits and pieces on it I'm just going to go ahead and zero this quickly and we'll be shooting the 26 grain uh, javelins at about 1020 feet per second out of this we've got magazines here on the hip and then we've got this rangefinder the helix 1500 that's set up with a ballistic profile for this rifle and then if there's any longer shots we're going to set the new m4 up on a tripod and um yeah this is really cool we've gone ahead and put a nice laminate uh, grip on this but aside from that it's the same old m4 that we've been using um well actually this is the first hand with the m4 but the same kind of gen general setup that we've been using for years the tried and tested it works 800 mil barrel 40 grand javelins and um we've put the element range finding module on top with a pressure sensor here so you know if we're on the tripod and we spot a dusty i can literally just hit range glance up at the firing solution that gets displayed on the screen and hold and shoot so it's a nice quick process and we should be able to you know get stuff quickly if the dusties are a little bit um, finicky but yeah this one with a, a titan 5 to 25 on top also needs to be zeroed and after we've zeroed the scope we've got to then zero the range finder to the to the scope which should be quite interesting because it's a bit bright and this visible laser that we use for zeroing might not be that visible um, and then lastly <coughs> we're gonna have to put air in load up some magazines as i said i've got this nice pouch on my hip with a bunch of magazines so we can get these nice and full and that means we should be all ready to go we can actually walk around this this whole area here where the Dussies are living and we can hopefully get a few down. This little FX Impact M3 is one of my favorites. You can hear just how quiet it is with that Fox silencer and it's put many a Dussie to sleep in its time. But this will likely just be a backup rifle today as I'm really wanting to spend some more time with the new M4. The M4 is probably also better suited to today's conditions with the little arca rail allowing me to clamp it into the tripod while I glass for dussies and the range finding module giving me faster firing solutions. Okay, scope is zeroed so we just need to get the laser for the range finder zeroed to the scope. It's quite simple, we just hold in the mode button to switch on the visible laser and we're going to point into the dark shed over there and okay so there's the laser 
can see it there, about four mils below, and we're just gonna turn it up. Everything's set up, so let's get walking and uh, see what we can get. Good position here, so I think we're just going to sit in, in glass for a while, see if we can spot any dusty activity. But we did see them running around earlier, so we know they are here. It's just a question of whether they'll actually come out right now or not. There are plenty of droppings all over the place, so we know that they're around, and patience pays off as we eventually spot one about 75 meters away. Big fat Dussy looking right at us there. Gonna get focused on him. Seventy six meters, it's one mil. He did wriggle around a bit, which means that I probably didn't get a perfectly square headshot but that's why we tend to opt for the more powerful 40 grain javelins at just like close to 100 foot pounds because they are a lot more forgiving. That hollow point, even if I didn't get squarely in the brain, that hollow point would have done a lot of damage and yeah, would have really um, put them down within a few seconds, which is really the goal. But before I go to look for that one, I'm just gonna stay and keep glassing because we've got a really good spot here and um, they will be around. Have you ever played a game of paintball or airsoft and the scene is set in a scrapyard like this? That's kind of how it felt looking for these dussies. A game of hide and seek, but with a gun that's far more capable than a paintball or airsoft gun. This actually bears so many similarities to when I hunted rock chucks in Utah. The chucks also like to make their homes in rubble like this and they have very similar behavior and mannerisms to dussies. It's funny, my eyes and my brain are so well trained to spot dussies against rocks in a sort of more natural environment. But this is so different to what I'm used to. It's like I have to reprogram my brain to pick up those dussie shapes. Um, I think that's a dussie right there. Perfect, straight down. That's chunky, dusty, big one. Perfect. Yeah, right there in the head, on the spot. That's what we came here for. This thing's probably five kilograms at least. And uh, I think the farm workers will be quite happy to get some meat and the farmer will be happy that there's one less dusty eating the sheep food. Mission accomplished, sort of, but we want to get more. Is it possible for it to be too hot for dussies? I didn't think that was possible, but it could be the case. I think we maybe wasted a bit too much time this morning, zeroing rifles and getting gear ready and all that, when we should have actually just done that yesterday somewhere else and come in nice and early. Because um, generally speaking, dussies like to emerge as it starts to get warm and you know sit out and sun themselves. But when it gets very hot, they tend to go back into the holes so I think we might have just timed it wrong but yeah there's definitely signs that there's plenty of dussies here we probably just need to strategize a bit better and time it a bit better so I think we'll call it a day here and come back early tomorrow morning as we're about to head home we spot a lone male monkey on its way into the bushes after raiding the cows feeding troughs and I try to take a shot but he's just too smart and manages to slip away but don't you worry, we'll get our chance tomorrow. Six AM the next morning, and the silence is broken by the sound of a hollow point slug depositing itself inside a monkey. 
On our way to the dusty spot, we've stumbled upon a troop of monkeys near the farmhouse and managed to trap them up a tree. This will not be like shooting fish in a barrel. Vervet monkeys are smart, the branches and leaves are thick, and a 5 to 25 rifle scope is definitely not the right tool for this job. But in this game of hide and seek, they can hide, but they can't run. This monkey's head is hidden from our view, but these fig leaves provide little protection and you can see the hole appear in the leaf before the monkey takes one right to the noggin. Some of the monkeys jump from the fig tree into a pine tree and they're a little bit easier to spot in the pine tree, although finding a way through the branches and pine cones is still challenging. This one doesn't provide an opportunity for a headshot, but as the branch sways forward and backwards, I'm able to time it well enough for a heart and lung shot and it switches him off straight away. This one gets very lucky as the slug is deflected off a pine cone, but the next one, not so lucky. As we drove in here this morning, we just saw a whole troop of monkeys running up into this, these fig trees and uh, yeah, ran out here and managed to pop three of them. I think one of them got stuck in the tree and then the other two have fallen down here. So yeah, good to get these things down. They are right here next to the farmhouse, so they're not where you want a monkey to be. <laughs> First monkey, still quite young, but every single monkey matters. And there's another one over here. Both of these were right in the head. And the other two, the other two I got here in this sort of thicker part of the tree. And they're just stuck in those branches there. But yeah, four monkeys is, I'm happy with that. Um, I think it's probably the only time ever that I've shot four monkeys in the same tree in one go. So, good way to start the day. But the dassies are waiting. It's good to get a few down. Well, back at the scrapyard and it's very clear that we're in for a much more eventful day as we arrive to find dusties everywhere. Right, we're in business. There's like six or seven dusties just sitting out there right now. Just goes to show, I think we just got the weather wrong yesterday, but it's nice and cool this morning, no wind. So fingers crossed we can get a couple down. Eighty-five meters. Gave it a mill and a half for elevation. It sounded really solid. Nice deep thump. So, yeah, it was a good shot. Hmm. Something is not quite right here. I aimed for the head, but hit the body. Thankfully, still in the vitals. But why did the point of impact shift so much? It's even more obvious that something is wrong when I miss the next dusty twice and I end up having to head back to the bucky to recheck zero and try and diagnose the problem and wait until you hear what was actually wrong. It's gonna make you laugh. With the issue fixed, we move towards an area with piles of old planks and tree stumps. I set up at a distance so as not to spook any dussies and soon I get my first opportunity. Now I'm dialed in. It was so frustrating. I kept on trying to understand why I was getting a point of impact shift, which is this gun just doesn't do that. It's so out of character for this gun. I was checking the footage and thinking, why are these shots not going where I'm expecting them to go? I thought maybe my rangefinder was no longer aligned or something like that. I went to check zero. As I was checking zero, I, I lifted my gun down and I heard a noise and it was my scope mounts shifting position in the pick rail. And uh, yeah, the whole scope mounts were we lose. Just goes to show that's that's one of the things, the checklist items that you should be checking before you go going to hunt and I didn't do it. And it probably cost me two 
clean headshots that actually ended up being bad shots. And I know that those shots would have put those dussies down eventually, but the goal as hunters is to not cause any suffering to animals. And yeah, I made a mistake. But mistake is corrected now. And let's see if we can make up for it with some good shots. I actually see a dussie there at distance. So let's uh, see if we can get him also. Okay. 98 meters, 2.1 mils. Gonna hold. Hit record. Oh. <laughs> that's what a proper zero rifle can do. That's what that's the, the impact that I know. 98 meters, what's that like 100 and 105 yards, 106 yards, something like that. Hold 2.1 moles and just watch her slow curl in perfectly. So we're in business now. Weather's perfect. Nice and cool, no wind. We've got a nice position here. We've got all these wood piles and the dusties are coming out. So yeah, yesterday was a bit slow, but we're making up for it this morning. Did. 63 meters so just holding hive center one of the most rewarding things for me about being part of what's happening at element optics is being able to be deeply involved in the development of products that actually work and actually make a difference um obvious example is this range finding module for this kind of hunting and for like monkey, monkey hunting, any hunting where you get a split second of opportunity to take a shot, having something that's mounted to your gun that allows you to keep your, your shape around your rifle and just hit a button and get a range without having to reach into your pocket or into a little bag like this and grab a, a range finder or grab range finding binos. That little bit of time that that saves you is a complete game changer with this kind of hunting. And even more normal things like these binos just to have <coughs> just to have decent binos with a good bino bag that i can access easily and use to glass it's changed the way i hunt um in the past i probably would have just used my scope and, and looked around which limits your field of view or would have used the rangefinder which obviously isn't as clear as binos but um these binos are doing a great job for me and um yeah it's just really cool to be part of something like this at element where we're actually making good stuff and can use it out in the field like this and test it and keep making it better. Yeah, there he is. You never know exactly whether you're going to get them or not because you know if you'd wriggled a little bit more you would have gone a bit deep in there and as you can see this isn't the most stable pile of stuff to climb on but uh, we're lucky this time not as big as uh, the dusty we got yesterday but yeah it's a good eating size yo yeah, it's hard to find these things so hard it's just a literally a big maze of rotting wood up there and it's a little bit too dangerous to climb on some of those logs so I'll probably just give the farm workers a rough indication of where they are and they're going to have to go find them themselves. Dussie was on a pile of scrap metal 
about 20 meters from where the goat feed gets put out. So I bet you that one's stocked up nicely on, uh, on proper food <laughs> and probably quite fat. Now that my mounts are actually tight, <laughs> I'm very happy with the way that this Impact M4 is performing. The form factor is also very familiar to me, so I feel like I've been able to hit the ground running. Another dust emerges from the same pile of scrap metal, and the result is no different. I have to thread the slug through the wire mesh here, but thankfully the dust stops with his head in a gap, and I'm able to put it right where it matters, right between the eyes. Nicole had to leave now uh, for a, a vet appointment for our dog, so I'm um, a lone hunter once again, um, but I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah, just me and my impact, a little action camera and the scope cam. Just got a dussy there at 77 meters, so held a little bit over. And um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw a little bit of bone and stuff flying out of its head. Or it could have been sticks, but yeah, this impact hits so hard. A lot of times you see little bits of skull fragments flying out. Uh, it is graphic, but it's a sign that uh, that the slug's done its job and that it's a humane shot, which is always a good thing to see. So another dusty down, and uh, sun is out now, which means that we may get some dussies sticking their heads out to sun themselves. Uh, that must have been 50 meters or under. Let me range quick. Yeah, 38 meters. So hold just on the head at these sort of 60 and under ranges. You can hold kind of center of the head. If it travels like two tenths high or two tenths low, you're still going to get a good solid shot. So very flat trajectory plus a lot of hitting power means that basically 60 and under. It's so easy, you don't even have to range. Um, but yeah, with the range finder on top, we can really reach out there if we want to. Let's take one more look around here because it's possible that after a shot like that, more start emerging out of curiosity. I bet there's a little dusty face watching me right now. Yeah, as expected, just waited maybe three minutes and another little head popped up. I actually thought I pulled the shot a bit high, but I got him right on the top of his noggin. And uh, yeah, I just saw a little bit of blood coming out the, the hole. So uh, another good shot. Man, I love this. <laughs> so much fun. All right, I'm gonna try not to get penetrated by a, a nail or bitten by a snake here. There you go. First dussy. Maybe this was the second. But anyway, hole right through the head there. There you go. <clears throat> Two more little meat packages for the farm workers. He's somewhere up here. Gotta look where I'm stepping. Uh, uh, there you go. See how easily they can fall down a hole? Should be able to get him out though. Yeah, there you go. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and a big thanks to James for allowing me to hunt on his property. I'll see you guys next time.